Yeah, the Linux Foundation called me and said, like, do you want to come on stage and do IoT demos? I have the slight impression they called all the other Linux distributions asking for executives to go on stage, but this unwritten rule, always put an executive on stage with a slide deck. So I said, yeah, I'll come and demo. How hard can it be? Yeah. So if anything goes wrong, it's all blame it on me. So what do we do at Canonical? Well, we run this uh, operating system uh, called Ubuntu. And we made something new, Ubuntu Core. And that's what I wanted to demo here today. But before I start demoing, let me go a little bit back. This came out some years ago. Everybody will probably know this, Raspberry Pi. If you think about it, it's more powerful than the first Google servers. It cost $25. It's amazing. It's like a supercomputer as big as a credit card. Then they brought out a better one. A little bit more expensive, but a lot more powerful. Then they started making it smaller. And what I got the other day was this, the NanoPi the smallest supercomputer, I would call it at this moment. But you can easily see that like computers will become cheaper, 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 and smaller and smaller and smaller, like $5, $10. So what does this mean? In a couple of years time, we'll have small chips in any type of device everywhere. And they will be super powerful, computers compared to a couple of years back. Now, think about this. How are we going to do that? Like, how much time do you spend on like a PC managing it, on your mobile managing it? Imagine now that you have 100,000 Linux devices all around you in your home, your office, and so on. How do we push software to it? How do we update it? How do we make it secure? Well, that's when we started to think a couple of years back. And basically, we came up with a new format called Snaps. And we thought, we can't make a new format without it working everywhere. So we worked with other Linux distributions to make sure it works on there as well. Why? Well, the Snap format is a new way of packaging software. You package it like an app, and then you deploy it onto an, any type of device. And the snap makes sure that it's secure. It also makes sure that like, if something goes wrong, you can roll back. And pretty soon, you can run your own app store. So this is what I wanted to come and demo today. So let me start. Solitaire. Of course, like how do you get an app to install? Well, you just do snap install. It downloads it, it's installing it, and now you should be able to play Solitaire. Now, why is this important? Well, you as a developer now put all the software together in a snap and determine when it's time to upgrade. It used to be that like, it was cool to have Debian and other type of packaging uh, formats to install new software, but we were always running behind. As a developer, what you actually want is to just have something in GitHub, package it up and push it out. You don't want uh, people from Ubuntu or any other distribution to, to have to do things. So, what we did is we made this packaging format with a tool to actually take the best tools out there. So, this was a snap I made uh, a couple of weeks ago, which packages a Python part, a Node.js, and uh, some Go language all together. So what do you do? 
you just run Snapcraft. And basically, it will read this Snapcraft file. I already did a pull step, otherwise you'll see things downloading and it's like watching paint dry. And then it will like compile everything, it will uh, build it. As you see, it's all being built. And then it will do the staging. And then at the end, it will do priming, bring, me, bring it all together. And if everything goes well, at the end, out comes a snap. It's priming. So let's, yeah, it's moving and it should be there in a second. So let's focus on, on this for a little bit. So what is Snapcraft? Snapcraft has these plugins for different languages that allows you to package straight out of Debian packages, out of GitHub, out of anywhere else, Maven, whatever you have, you just package them together in a snap. And then afterwards, thank you, Melissa, uh, you get this uh, snap. Okay. Here it is. So I have my AWS snap. So the only thing I now have to do is to push it to the store. And it will. It will go and you'll be able to then download it. So. I made another snap, no dread. This is the most amazing IBM software I've seen in my life. It basically is really cool and really easy. Because if you haven't worked with it, it's just as simple as like you drag and drop, you connect, you deploy, and you can send messages. So. What can we do with this? Let's hope this works. So here I made an Arduino with some temperature sensor. And basically, I was making this last uh, yesterday in the airport, uh, almost had a bomb scare there because a strange guy like with wires onto some crazy things. So what this basically means is I can, with almost no effort, just make a temperature sensor. And if everything goes well, we should see it go up. It doesn't. Oh, yeah, there. Okay, it went up. Sorry, there's something else running as well. Now, what's the problem with this? This sends continuously. And in IoT, you have these two camps. You have the sensor camp and you have the cloud camp. All data gets sent immediately to the cloud. That's what everybody should do. Because that's where you can then do things. Well, I'm not really so sure. Because this sends quite quickly data. And if you start doing the calculations about like sending some data from a million of devices, you very quickly get to these big numbers, especially if you start sending video data. So what you actually want to do is you want to do some analytics locally. So what am I going to do here? Well, I made this statistics function. And what this does is calculate strange numbers. OK, I think now it comes. Yeah. What this does is it takes the mean every three seconds of the temperature. So even if the Arduino is sending it every half a second, this takes the mean, and as such, you can like reduce enormously the data. Because what you don't want is create an alarm every time there's a reading of a sensor that goes spiky. 
You want it to be, if the temperature goes up for the last 10 seconds, 20 seconds, on average, there might be a fire. Not if somebody just touched the sensor by error and it spiked. So analytics on the edge is something that we need if we want to do really IoT. And think about it, you could do all these type of complex analytics with machine learning and so on. Now, what do we actually want? We want to integrate this into the cloud. So, that's how fast you can integrate things into the cloud now. But, to tell you the truth, that is how fast IBM does it, because they focused very good on integrating it. Then I tried to integrate things into other clouds, and it became a lot harder, because I had to, like, create certificates, I had to create a profile, I had to create things, I had to attach those things, and so on and so on, just to be able to start talking to, for instance, the Amazon cloud. So I said, it should be, ooh, it's getting really hot here. <laughs> I told you it was going to. So I said, we need to be able to do it easier. So let me stop everything that like I've running on this box. So to really make it go bad. And then show you what I did with the AWS IoT snap that you saw building before. So what I'm installing is, I'm installing on this little box, which is just like a Wi-Fi router and four Ethernet ports, uh, an MQTT agent, Node-RED again, uh, some RFID, some LED, you'll see that in a, in a minute, and some other snaps. And now the interesting one, the AWS IoT. How can you connect this box very quickly to the cloud? Well, you generate a thing, you create a policy, you then create keys, you attach those things to those um, certificates, you attach the policy to the certificate, all of your steps, and basically, boom. So what I did is I created a snap that automated setting up these hard to do things. Because I'd actually want to go and connect things to the cloud. So let's see if this is still up and running. Okay, what this is, is a light sensor here. So if I put my hand on it, it goes down. Hmm, cool. So now, by connecting this, and let me just, in case, restart it locally so that. Okay, so now I'm sending it here, and somewhere I'm getting it out again. And to show you that I'm not lying, here is the MQTT on AWS. So I'm sending it to AWS, and then afterwards I'm getting it out again. Now what if I send it to AWS and then read it there again? So I'm now going to the other box. And I'm reading it there. So what this means is that with apps, I can integrate any cloud, I can integrate any sensor. 
Now think about it. In IoT, what is one of those things that everybody always says? Different standards, which one should I use? Which cloud should I use? Well, I just deployed one. You can make another snap and deploy another one. You can make other standards, like you can have IoTivity standard. Linux Foundation uh, definitely are familiar with this one. You can deploy that as a snap. But why not also deploy all join? So in a world of IoT where we don't have standards yet, what we need is smart devices that can bring all these sensors together and then integrate them via just bringing any protocol, any standard as a snap. Now, what else can I do? We work together with OwnCloud, which makes this software to uh, store data on a local thing and also Western Digital. So basically, what this is, is you just have a Raspberry Pi, a hard disk, and a box. Other companies tend to charge quite some money for this because they just put a microphone in it and then they put some things like this. What's the weather going to be like tomorrow in Berlin? Tomorrow in Berlin, Germany, there will be cloudy skies with a high of 49 and a low of 41. So this is Alexa. If you want Alexa, already installed, of course. This is what you have to do. So bringing all these cool things to a device that you deploy in your house that now connects to lots of things in your house because like Alexa, you could have a Chrome snap and cast files that you have locally stored to your Chromecast. You could integrate with some Apple TV. You could integrate with a Sonos. You could integrate with a Nest. You could integrate with everything. So the whole idea of like these walled gardens we should stop thinking about it. It should all be software-defining applications. What else can we do? Well, we work together with Facebook, and they have these like big switches that they now open source called the wedges. By bringing software as a snap onto a networking switch, you can redefine what it does. Last year on Mobile Wild Congress, we showed that by putting a robot arm on top of a switch and two IoT apps on it and some other things. And we called it the smartest switch of Mobile World Congress. Fortunately, Cisco, Huawei, Ericsson, Nokia, and so on didn't have a switch that could control robots. So they had to admit it was the smartest switch. This year, we had lots of Broadcom switches that were a lot smarter and actually production ready. And Anybody can now go to Amazon, buy a box that has an Intel or an ARM processor inside and just put networking software on it, because that's exactly what I did. But I'm not using this for a switch. What I actually can use it for is to make an access system to my house. Because if somebody that doesn't, that I don't know comes in, nothing happens. But if somebody I do know comes in, then I can send a personalized message. And this is the power. You can go and buy things on Amazon, on other places, and connect them together into new type of things. Have you seen your switch being talking to an RFID to a LED before. Well, you could like make this talk to anything now. Think about a world where like you just grab things together and all link them. We also 
did a crowdfunding campaign because we're trying to change the way software is done on wireless. So I have a, a pre-built thing of the Lime SDR, but basically you plug this in and through an app, you now define any type of um, wireless protocol. So you can make your own wireless protocol and be it, make this box a 4G box, make this box a LoRa box, or make a better standard. And this is where like, the GitHub generation will meet the wireless innovation. And then I just wanted to show the last thing. Why do you want powerful boxes? Well, you want them for this. Because unfortunately, my Arduino can't do this. It takes a couple of seconds to start up. In the future, we want autonomous things. that can recognize. So basically, think about this. You can have all types of sensors, all type of machine learning, all type of clouds, all type of actuators, all brought together. Just snap away. Thank you. <laughs>